produced by the digestion of food, glucose, represented by these purple squares here, must be transported from the gut lumen into the epithelial cells. This process, done by SGLT1, or sodium-dependent glucose co-transporter 1, must be done against the concentration of glucose, which is in higher concentration inside the cells. We can therefore say that the epithelial cells are hypertonic to the gut lumen in terms of glucose since it has more solute, and that the gut lumen is hypotonic to the epithelial cells. Therefore, since glucose is going against its concentration gradient, ATP must be used. This is why it's known as a type of active transport. Active transport is when energy must be used in order to transport a substance across the lipid bilayer. It is also facilitated diffusion in that the sodium, represented by these blue circles, um, are used to facilitate the diffusion of glucose across the membrane. Water will flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. So since the gut lumen has a higher concentration of water with its low concentration of solute, water will tend to flow into the cell with the glucose to reach equilibrium in this case. Since glucose can't bind by itself, the two sodium ions must open the glucose port. So by the binding of these two sodium, the glucose ports open and glucose can get into their ports. Sodium goes down its concentration gradient, and glucose and sodium together move into the epithelial cells. Because sodium is in low concentration in the epithelial cells, there's a low chance of glucose going back out of the cell. These same sodium atoms could be used later in the sodium-potassium pump. So in the sodium potassium pump, the pump has a high affinity initially for um, sodium. So three sodium ions bind and the potassium channel is blocked. But because the sodium is going from its low concentration to a high concentration, ATP must be used. So we see ATP here, which actually becomes ADP and that one extra phosphate group binds to this pump in order to fuel this reaction. So the sodium now is able to move because the phosphorylation triggers a conformational change that the pump doesn't want the sodium anymore. So it drops it off on the extracellular fluid. Now, however, because of the phosphorylation of the pump, it has a high affinity for K plus or potassium ions. So now the potassium bind, but remember only two potassium bind and three sodium. So now that the so now that the sodium have left, the potassium have been um, added onto the pump. But this triggers the release of this phosphate, which results in a conformational change back to the affinity for sodium. So it drops these potassium off. And it starts to cycle over again since it wants um, sodium again. So the this this creates a membrane potential across the epithelial cell and the extracellular fluid. But if you look at the whole picture from the gut lumen to the epithelial cell to the extracellular fluid, glucose can be moved. Although SGLT1 only moves it from the gut lumen to the epithelial cell, um, facilitating proteins like SGLT2 and GLUT1 and GLUT2 um, further help glucose in order to make it to the extracellular fluid, which, for example, could be blood in the kidneys. This entire process is extremely important in digestion, and it's all run by diffusion.